I bet that you want to make money with your photographs. How do you do it? I'm going to give you some things to think about on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. Listen, I'm recording this in August of 2020, and as of now, we are so close to hitting 1 million subscribers on the Adorama YouTube channel. So if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead, click that button down below. Also hit the little bell so you'll get notifications every time new videos come out. All right, let's get right to it. Today's question is from Sasha G, and it is simply, how do you make money with your photographs? Simple enough, right? Listen, I've gotten a lot of questions over the years, similar questions about photo business, licensing, marketing, all kinds of things like that. What I'm gonna do today is give you my general thoughts about making a living as a photographer. Now, all of these pieces of advice are also true for most other creative fields, if you're a videographer or a writer or anything like that, but I'm gonna specifically talk about photography. Now, I've made my living shooting pictures for nearly 30 years now, so, uh, I started out, I was a newspaper staffer, I've been a magazine freelancer, I've done advertising work, commercial work, I've been on tours with bands, I also do a lot of teaching and workshops, right? So I have figured out some things that are true across all of those types of photography and can help you to really do what you need to do to make a living in this crazy business. All right, here are my top four things. Number one is a twist on an old adage, and I'm gonna say, photograph what you love, right? The expression, of course, do what you love and the money will follow. But if you are passionate about what you're photographing, you're just gonna do it better than anybody else. Now, I don't mean passionate necessarily about the person or the event you're photographing, but the craft of making images of that thing. Most of my career, I've been shooting sports and concerts. I can photograph teams, for example, that I don't like, right? Even if I'm not a fan of that team, but I can still make money doing that. I'll give you a quick example. Back in 2002, I photographed the Ohio State-Michigan game, and uh, Ohio State won. They, the fans stormed the field. They picked Craig Krenzel, the quarterback, up on their shoulders, and they carried him off the field. I made a really good picture of that. Ohio State went on to defeat the University of Miami, my University of Miami Hurricanes, in the, for the national championship th that year, and I was pretty upset about that. But guess what? Joke's on them, because I made a, quite a bit of money off of Greg Krenzel and those photographs. I also had my first Sports Illustrated cover the next year with a picture of Craig Krenzel. So I love Ohio State now, right? Even though they beat my Hurricanes, I still have a sore spot there. But I am passionate about making those images, not necessarily just about the teams that I cover. So the other part of doing what you love is really that there is a tipping point. There's some point where it's gonna get really hard. As you're building up your business, um, you're gonna find there's gonna be a, a plateau, and most people get to that point. If you're not truly passionate about it, that's when they're gonna give up, right? So if you really are passionate about it, you're gonna push through despite all the odds, despite what everybody's telling you, despite what the numbers are saying and everything, you're gonna push through and get to the other side, and it's gonna be a lot easier when that happens. So photograph what you love. All right, number two is learn where the money is. You have to be smart. This is business, right? You have to learn where the markets are for your style of photography. Let's say you love shooting flowers, right? So you might think, oh, I'll just put them online and people are gonna buy prints of it, right? Well, guess what? Selling prints online like that is probably not gonna bring in any consistent revenue or not very much, right? So. Um, why is that? Well, it's simply supply and demand, basic economics. There are a lot of people who take flower pictures and you can find them, you can just do a Google search and you're gonna find plenty of them. So for somebody to actually buy a print is gonna be unlikely. Now, if you are a, a flower photographer and that's really where you wanna be, and you look at the markets, you might say, oh, maybe I'll become a fine art photographer and work with museums or, you know, get into that world. That is, that could be lucrative, right? If that's really your passion. So you have to figure out, once you figure out what you want to shoot, then you have to figure out where that market is for that kind of work. Where is the money? Now, how do you learn these things? Well, there's plenty of research online, of course. Um, also, you can assist other photographers who do what you want to do. Now, easier said than done. There's a lot of people vying for very few spots, but it is possible. Again, if you're passionate, about it and you're persistent and you can bring value to that photographer's business, you can reach out to them and try to get in and, and you know, try with multiple photographers and keep coming back nicely, not, you know, not too obnoxiously, but 
over time, you might actually wind up getting some work there and you can learn from them as well. Also, you can just ask if you have access to photographers uh, in that field, you can just ask, take somebody to, to, to lunch or to coffee. And once this is all over, of course, and, um, and ask them questions. Look, I offer one-on-one -on -one workshops. You can actually hire me to tell you whatever it is you want to know if I haven't already answered it on one of these videos. So um, that is something that I do in my business to help photographers as well. And other photographers will do that either for free or paid as well. So there are lots of things out, lots of ways out there to get this information. All right, that's number two. Number three, this is huge, develop multiple streams of income. There are lots of ways to bring in money. Some of them are going to be big money. Some of them are going to be little amounts of money, small amounts. Um, if you have as many of those as possible going on at once, you're going to make more money. Now, this can be, this can be active income, like actual assignment fees or for com you know, commission shoots where you go out, you shoot, and you're paid for that shoot. Or it can be passive income, like stock images. It can be your archives can be generating revenue and those images can be licensed over time while you sleep. You can do that yourself or with a company like Photo Shelter where you can set that up online or if you work with an agency, they can do that for you. Um, also, another reason to have multiple streams of income besides, of course, making more money is to protect against the unknown. We're right now in the middle of a global pandemic. Entire industries were put on hold. All live events, weddings, concerts, sporting events, they were all put on hold for a while. So now, of course, we couldn't have known this was going to happen, but it is not smart. If you had had all your eggs in one basket, then you would not, you would really be in trouble now. And a lot of photographers actually are because they had one big client. And if it's a if you're a sports photographer and that's all you do and you were working for one big client, that may have gone away right now. So by, um, by having those multiple streams of income, you can have the flexibility. If one client goes away and then you still can make that up with other clients and you're always working on generating new streams of revenue as well. So that's a great way to go. All right, number four is simply take care of business. This might actually be the most important thing. I would rather be a great business person and an average photographer than the other way around. Of course, I'd rather be both a great photographer and business person, but uh, the business part is so important. Running a photography business is a little bit of photography and a lot of business. I spend way more time doing business stuff than I do actually shooting pictures, and most photographers I know are the same way. You have to deal with things like contracts and how to negotiate and taxes, and you have to have a solid team around you, like an accountant and a lawyer. You have to deal with things like commercial business insurance, that's going to protect you, right? So by the way, if you have homeowner's insurance, this is in the U.S., I don't know about the rest of the world, but in the U.S., homeowner's insurance doesn't always cover your gear, especially if you're using it for professional purposes. So make sure you check with a good agent about that. I have commercial insurance that covers all of my gear in case something is broken or stolen or whatever. I also have liability insurance, which if I, the, the person I'm um, photographing gets hurt or an assistant trips on a cord or somebody, a light falls on somebody, th that person could sue you and you could lose everything and it, all your money. So that is not a good thing. So if you want to stay in business, you need to make sure you take care of all that stuff. Now, business also includes marketing. It's pr I probably should do a whole separate video just on marketing, but it's huge. Wedding photographers, for example, once the wedding's over and the sales part is done, that client is gone, right? Wedding photographers are constantly marketing themselves to get more clients. That's really the biggest chunk of their business. Now, how you market yourself really depends on who you're marketing to. And you could be B2B, business to business, where you're really only working with businesses. And if that's the case, you have a very tight marketing focus and you can focus in on, on those exact um, clients, uh, like if you're doing advertising or corporate work or sports and concerts. My case, I work for bands and record labels a lot, so I only have to market to them. And I my focus is really on marketing to them directly for that kind of work. Now, if you're B2C, business to consumer, then you have to deal with the consumers, basically everybody. And that could be like if you do events and occasions like wedding photographers or family pictures, or if you sell prints or merchandise, that you have to have a much broader marketing focus. And it's going to look very different than if you are just dealing with businesses. But either way, what you're trying to do with your marketing is show potential clients how you can add value to their business. You need to be able to do something that they can't do on their own and also that you do better than any other photographer. So, um, 
that's really how you have to think of it when you're looking at your marketing options. Now look, there are a lot of options as a photographer. There are a lot of ways you can make money, a lot of different kinds of photography that you can do. Some are potentially more lucrative, things like advertising and commercial work, weddings, high-end weddings can actually do really well. And then there are some that have more potential for stability. If you're a staff photographer where you actually are an employee and you're paid a salary, or if you do corporate work where you have repeat clients, you know, you have enough of those uh, corporate clients where they keep coming back and you're always working. But at the end of the day, there's really no direct path in a creative field. You, you, the beauty of it, in a way, is we're creative people, and you have to find your own. You have to find your own way. You have to take all of this information and put it all in the bag and, and mix it up, and then figure out what works for you. With me, again, I was a staffer. I was a freelancer in uh, commercial and editorial, and then most recently, I've been on tour. Now, how have I done that? Well, it's not just oh, I'm a good photographer. Please hire me. That that doesn't work. I've brought value to my clients. We've sold prints over the years. I've done photo books. Those generate revenue for my clients, right? And it's a product that they're proud of selling. Um, I also do workshops, uh, by the way, you know, as you know, probably. So, um, so those workshops uh, also bring value to my clients. I also have multiple streams of income. I still license my stock images and, um, you know, I have all these different ways that I am generating revenue. I can help you directly with your career. If you're trying, if you have a specific question for your career, that is another one of my multiple streams of income. You can go to AskDavidBergman.com and find on there that I will work with you one-on-one -on -one directly. That is part of my business. So it's good for you and it's good for me as well. It's not huge money. I try to keep it as affordable and accessible as I can so that I can work with as many people as possible. But that is something that I've done for my business that is a win-win for both you and me. So again, put all that in the bag, figure out what works for you, do the best you can, and you can actually make a living, believe it or not, as a photographer. So thanks very much for asking those questions. Keep them coming at AskDavidBergman.com. Also remember, we're trying to get to 1 million subscribers. Go ahead and subscribe below, like and comment. I'll be in the comments trying to help as best I can. I'm back here every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll see you next week with a new episode of Ask David Bergman.